Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, welcome back to another episode of Bad Beast Barbecue. Hey, today we're going to be doing a six and a half pound bone in pork butt on the Rectech Bullseye using Rectech's freaking Greek rub, okay? So, hey, let's go ahead and get this started. He's a bad beast on that barbecue on the grill of the smoker. He knows just what to do. Let's go ahead and get this uh, pork butt set up. Sorry for the geese in the background, but can't shut them off. So we're going to just take off some of these pockets of fat off of this six pound pork butt. And we're using our Dow Strong uh, Frost Fire Filet Knife. Uh, Dow Strong has some fantastic knives if you guys are interested in getting some. Uh, they not only cut well, man, but they are literally works of art. Look at the handle on this bad boy. This is really nice. So I'll put a link in the description block for this particular knife. And, uh, and don't forget that if you use our Bad Beast Barbecue code, you get 10% off your entire purchase. Okay. All right. So it's good get one this little pocket right here and this knife cuts really good man it's like a lightsaber going through flesh <laughs> for all you star wars fanatics out there so it's like slicing up obi-wan kenobi all right so we got the pockets of fat off we're gonna go ahead and put a binder on we're going old school we're going to use some mustard as our binder all right and get all our nooks and crannies. And here is Regtex freaking Greek and rub. Some good stuff here. And you see that this pork butt has a, a nice uh, fat cap on the bottom of it that should protect it while cooking. So we're gonna season that anyway. All right, we get our sides. I may have to open the other side to get a little bit better flow. Just be controlled. There we go. All right. All right. Let's get our other side. And we're using Kingsford pellets today. We're using the same combination that we used in the last cook, which is oak hickory and cherry. It's the classic blend. All right, let's get this bad boy seasoned up. There we go. All right, guys, so now that our pork butt is seasoned with our freaking Greek and rub and our bullseye is up to 250 degrees, we're going to go ahead and get her on here and get the process started. And we'll just see how this six and a half pound pork butt comes out. We are going to wrap. I'm going to wrap in butcher paper today. So we'll see how this entire process uh, takes place. So let's go ahead and get her on the grill. All right, so now that our bullseye is up to 250 degrees internal, we're going to go ahead and put on our pork butt. But we shall see. Go ahead and the bone is right here, so we're going to go ahead and stick our probe in like such. And we'll come back when we reach 160 degrees and wrap. So, hey, don't go nowhere. All right, guys, so we've had the uh, pork butt on for a couple of hours, now, a few hours now. A matter of fact, and it's at 147 degrees internal temperature, but I wanted to show you something. So while the pork butt looks really nice, as you can see, got some great color on it. My main concern is the grease that's collecting underneath it. And let me show it to you. So guys, as you can hear and see the grease that's pooled underneath the pork butt, uh, that could be a, a hazard. There's nowhere for that grease to flow to like the other Rectex 
Uh, would be nice if they had a, a spout for it to get out of the, uh, not pool underneath the food, because if that does happen and the grease gets into the uh, fire pot, it could be a fire hazard. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and close this back up and let it get to 160 degrees so we can go ahead and wrap it. All right, guys, so our temperature is saying 159, so we're going to go ahead and wrap it in some butcher paper. All right, so before we put this back on, we're gonna try to mop up some of this grease so that we won't have a potential grease fire here. All right, we're gonna take some paper towel and tongs and try to mop up some of this grease that's in here. Next time we cook a fatty type meat, we will put a pan in here to try to catch this instead. Just want to get as much of this out of here as I can to prevent any type of grease fire. All right, there we go. So now we're going to put in the grate again. All right. So now that we got the grease mopped up and the grate back in, put our pork butt back on there. And we're going to put our temperature probe back in and we're going to close it up and we're going to wait for 205 to 207 degrees. All right guys so as you can see our uh, Rectech bullseye gauge says we're at 205. Let's go ahead and hit it with another thermometer to make sure. All right let's see what our probe says here. There's 204, seeing how tender it is. That goes right through like butter, look at there. Just like butter. All right, so we can go ahead and pull this bad boy off and let it rest. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this in a cooler and wrap it in a towel. We're gonna let it rest for a couple hours before we attempt to pull it. Standard procedure. All right, let's give it time to rest. All right guys, so we're inside now. It's gotten dark outside. We've had our pulled pork or our pork butt uh, wrapped in a towel and in our uh, thermos here for two and a half, almost three hours now. So we're gonna go ahead and get it out and see if we can go ahead and shred it, okay? Still nice and warm. All right, so I'll bring you closer so you can see me unwrap it out of the paper and uh, pull it. All right, let's go ahead and unwrap this. Well, still got a lot of juice in here, even though we used a we use butcher paper. There are tons of juice in here. Um, like I'm going to have to clean my bar again. All right. Nice and careful with it. All right. There we go. Put this over here. All right, so let's see if we can find the bone. It falls apart nicely. Don't even don't even need any pulled pork forks. Okay, looks really good. Nice bark on it. 
Oh, been a bone in. Where's my bone at? Oh, there it is. Well, that's a small bone for a bone in pork butt. No, nope, that's what the store said. So, so as you can see, this falls apart. Fantastic. And pull the fat out of it and this is going to be fantastic so now all we have to do is is have a taste test all right and see exactly how the freaking greek and rub came out see they got some nice bark on it okay too all right let's go ahead and have a taste test all right guys so like i mentioned before we use the rec tech freaking greek rub so it's got a nice um smell to it it's uh kind of an herbal smell to it We'll go ahead and have a taste test. Smells fantastic. All right, let's have a taste. Oh yeah, this is really, really good. I like that um, that rub, that rub is really good. It's got, like I said, a herbal flavor to it. Got some nice salt content to it, so you don't need any, any additional salt. The, uh, the pulled pork or the pork butt is nice and tender. Um, not as much smoke flavor as I would have liked, we use the Kingsford uh, Classic Blend. Uh, next time we'll probably use another Kingsford, a little stronger wood, maybe the Mesquite or the Hickory by itself. But overall, this is really, really good. It pulls apart fantastic. Like I said, the, the, the secret to having some great pulled pork is once it comes off the smoker, make sure you wrap it up, leave it wrapped, put it in a cooler, a dry cooler, maybe wrapped in towels like we did and let it sit for two or three hours. Don't worry, it'll remain warm, and then you can, it'll almost fall apart when you go to put your hands on it, okay? So, fantastic, fantastic pulled pork. This is really good. It's got a nice smoke ring to it. I do see the smoke ring, just don't have a lot of smoke flavor, so I'm not quite sure what to attribute that to. So, but I can't wait to put these in some tacos. All right, so... As you guys saw, we used the Rectech Bullseye um, in smoker mode. And um, I showed you the issue you have with the pooling of grease with fatty meats. So if you're gonna do that, you may wanna put a pan either on top of the deflector plate or put your pulled pork or your pork butt inside of a pan with a grate. So they'll collect that grease um, and uh, eliminate a potential fire hazard, okay? So uh, I wish Rectech had kind of made the deflector plate on a slant with a groove and um, so that the grease could pour out like the other Rectex into an outside receptacle, like a bucket or something. Uh, that would have been nice. So even though this is kind of built as a Rectech grill, uh, you can smoke on it, but when you smoke on it, it's going to accumulate a lot of uh, grease uh, from the fat from the meat, okay? Well, that's all we have time for today. Hey, like we always say, where there's smoke, there's fire. If it's fire, then damn it, there just might be a barbecue there. Hey, as always, hey, we'll see you guys around the smoker. Hmm. Just need a little barbecue sauce and it'll be right on point. Hmm. Make sure you try this. See you guys in the next video.